Hello everyone and welcome to WASP 101. I'm Andrea Rossi, the developer of WASP. After all the tutorials on field aggregations, I would like to now take a little step back and start looking a little bit more in detail into some of the uh, core elements of WASP. In this tutorial, we are going to take a deeper look into the topic of connections. And specifically, we are going to be looking at how we can use uh, a component we haven't used before, which is the component connection from plane, to generate connections which can be edited during the aggregation, for example, by changing their um, angle. So what we are going to be exploring is how we can move from a perfectly regular aggregation uh, where everything is rigidly interlocking at 90 degrees to an aggregation where we allow a certain level of rotation between the parts up to the way to an aggregation where the angle is completely free and creates an almost chaotic aggregation. Uh, what we are also going to be doing is we are also going to be looking how we can edit these connections not only for a whole aggregation but also for a specific part of an aggregation and what we this what could for example allow us to uh, generate an irregular seed of few parts let's say 10 or 20 and then grow from there with um, rigid 90 degrees interlocking and generating a structure in which uh, the original orientations of the seed parts are maintained but then the individual groups that follow from each part have uh, followed this orientation rigidly by interlocking at 90 degrees. Let's get started. If you download the uh, Rhino file that you will find in the description box, uh, you'll find the part that we already used in tutorial number 9 of volumetric fields, which is a simple L-shaped part. Now, this is almost the same part that we used there, but with a fundamental difference. And the fundamental difference is that both connections, inner and outer, are uh, oriented vertically. Uh, we are going to start by uh, generating our part and our aggregation, and then we are going to see how we can edit the connections in order to achieve specific uh, results. Let's go on and create a geometry component. Right click, set one geometry and import our L-shaped connection. And then let's select that L-shaped connection and hide it in Rhino. Let's then create a point component. Right click and set multiple points, import our connection and we're going to export just the outer ones for now and enter to accept and a curve component to import our uh, direction. So set multiple curves, select the outer here and the outer here in the same order and enter and right click to accept. We are then going to do the same by creating again a point component. Right click, set multiple points and I'm going to select the inner points and right click to accept and create a curve component, right click, set multiple curves and select the two inner directions. All right. Now that we created all these components, we can go on and create our part. So we're going to go to parts, wasp basic part. We're going to give it a name that in this case, in my case, it's just going to be L. We're going to assign our geometry. And then we have to generate our connections. And to do that, we're going to go to elements, connection from direction. We're going to assign geometry, center, up vector. And then we're going to also assign them a type. And in this case, the type is going to be outer. So we're going to create a panel and type the name outer in all caps. I'm then going to create a second connection from direction where I'm going to again connect my geometry, my points and my curves. And in this case, we are going to create a panel and give it the type inner. Then just to keep a bit of order, we are going to create a merge component where we're going to connect our connection from the first component and from the second one. And then we're going to connect them to connection. And this has created our part. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a stochastic aggregation that will allow us to experiment with how um, the aggregation will look so when you change. Everything that we're going to be doing right now with a stochastic connection could be done with a field-driven aggregation as well. 
it's just that for the specific OCSST tutorial of this tutorial it's quicker to do it with a stochastic aggregation. Let's go on then and let's create under aggregation stochastic aggregation. Let's assign our parts to part. Let's specify the number we want. Let's say we want 200. For the rules, let's just drop in a rule generator, connect it to part, and connect it to rules. And for now, let's leave all the rules allowed. And lastly, let's create a button. For resetting. Now to check what we've created, we can just go under parts, get part geometry, connect to this, and here we go. Now, as we said, we see that if we reset several times, we get different results. But you notice something. You notice that whatever we get, it's always a flat two-dimensional pattern. And the reason for that is that, as I said at the beginning, all our connections are oriented uh, in the same way. And so there's no possibility to add um, a rotation. Now, to add a rotation, there's a couple of options. Of course, as you know, we could change the individual curves of the um, defining the direction of each connection. But another option is instead to create connections based on the planes that are generated for this for the straight connections and then rotate those planes. Let's go on and do that. Let's keep Alt pressed and create a bit of space in between our connections and our merge. And let's ha hide the result of the aggregation for now. So now the component, um, the connection component will return you two uh, outputs. One of them is of course the connection, but the second output is the plane which represent that connection. What we are gonna do then uh, for our uh, specific example is we are gonna go and get a component that we never use, which is called connection from plane. We're gonna bring it in. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this plane, rotate it of a certain angle, around its z-axis and then create a new connection based on that plane. To do that we are going to create get a component that is called rotate plane here. We are going to connect the output of like our plane output from the connection component. We're going to right click on A and say that we want to use degrees angles. And then we are going to say that we want to rotate it of 90 degrees for now. Now you see that we get a plane that is overlapping from that, but if you can see from the from the green axis that was here, now it's actually there. So we rotated it of 90 degrees around its z-axis. And now what we can do is we can take our connection, connect it to our plane, and we can also assign a type. And we could assign the same type as the previous one, or we could create a new type. In this case, we're going to call it outer underscore rot to send for rotation. And what we're going to do is we're going to zoom onto the merge and create a new input and connect our connection there. We are then going to go on and select this components that we just created. Control C, Control V to copy paste them below. And we're going to connect the plane output of the second connection. And we're also going to edit the type from outer rot to inner rot. And then zoom in on merge to create a new input and connect it. So now that we added some rotated connections, if we activate the preview, nothing has changed yet. But if we reset, we see that we are actually going to create a much different aggregation. Let's maybe add a custom preview to see a bit better what we are creating and a swatch maybe. And you see what we created. Now we are creating a much more compact, compact aggregation because we are actually allowing those connections. Uh, if we want to have a slightly less compact aggregation, we can exclude some rules 
and we can do that by creating as you know a rule grammar so what we're gonna do with a rule grammar we're gonna create a panel right click to uncheck multi-line data and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna allow to allow connections the outer connections and the outer rod connection to connect with each other and the inner and inner rod to connect with each other. So what that means is that I'm gonna force all connections to always have a rotation and this will naturally create a more open aggregation. So let's go on and write it and it's gonna be outer and then I'm gonna put my arrow sign to outer rod and we wanna always write them in both direction outer rod to outer and then inner to inner rot and inner rot to inner. I'm gonna now connect my rules and I'm gonna create this and here you see we get this a bit more open aggregation where every element connects to the next one and it's always rotating. Now Till here, nothing new. We are basically recreated the same aggregation that we created in uh, in tutorial nine, but with uh, using these elements. Now, however, the big difference here is that the we can now use the power of grasshopper and of parametric modeling to parametrically edit the angle that defines these connections in order to create a variety of outcomes. For example, what's very interesting is that I could change this angle of very little, even just say that I want to rotate it of 88 degrees instead of 90. And if I reset, you'll see that my whole aggregation starts to assume this slight level of rotation. And if you increase the number of parts, you're going to see this constant little rotation step by step across the element. And I think that this is something that is quite interesting to explore on a design level because it gives rise to these aggregations that are almost reg entirely regular, but they still show some level of directionality in the way they're built. And of course we can go back and we can change this to a much more extreme change. So let's say for example, we wanna go to 75. And if we now reset and wait, our aggregation will start to become extremely chaotic. So you see how by quickly changing this angle between these elements, you can very quickly create aggregations that despite being based on the same parts, they have very different um, aesthetics and also could be used for very different applications. Now, an interesting thing that we can also do is that this editing can be done not only on the whole aggregation, but also we can edit the angle as we grow the aggregation. For example, if I go to my stochastic aggregation and start with just a number of 10 parts, and I'm gonna, for example, reset a couple of times till when it's something I like, and then I will go back here and change this angle back to 90, so back to our regular aggregation, if I will add now more parts without resetting, these first 10 parts will keep their orientation and everything that will be attached to it will then follow in a 90 degree angle. So if I'm, for example, now gonna create a 250 parts, you see what's happening. We have individual chunks of aggregations which within themselves, they all follow 90 degrees angle. But since these seed parts were different, they, we have these different blocks of aggregation where each of them follows a custom orientation. And what's interesting is that we can always change this again. So I could always go back now, go back to, I don't know, for example, I'm gonna go to 75 degrees and I'm gonna add, let's say 20 parts. So I'm gonna go to 270. And now I added some parts which have irregular rotations Let's maybe add a bit more, so let's go to 300. Oops. Oops sorry, somehow my... So let's move it a bit up. So we start see that we start having again these irregular elements. And if now we go and bring it back again to 90... Oops, sorry. 
and start growing again, we inserted again new orientation, which then will be followed again in a 90 degrees fashion. And so you see that what we're creating, which I think is very interesting, is these aggregations which are constantly oscillating between being completely regular and completely regular. And we have like a possibility of mediating between these different typologies and create interesting objects which create a tension between the two extremes. Great, that's it for this uh, short tutorial. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. As always, if anything is not clear, let me know in the comments. I'm gonna try to answer. And uh, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and bye.